Hi, I'm Ann Robinson, and this is one of my laboratories here at Tulane University. My research is in the broad area of bioengineering and biotechnology. And in this area, there are several different laboratories doing research, and these all fall under the general umbrella of chemical engineering here at Tulane. So you can get your PhD here in chemical engineering. You can also get a combined degree, that's a PhD in chemical engineering, and a master's uh, through the biomedical sciences program at Tulane Medical School. So for my laboratory, I've had 16 PhD students graduate, and those students, for the most part, have gotten jobs in the biotechnology and pharmaceutical companies. At present, my laboratory, on average, is five or six PhD students and one to two postdoctoral students. The research in my laboratory is generally focused on understanding the properties of proteins. And proteins, if you look at this representation, this is just a child's toy that makes a good um, model, I think. And if you think about a protein, it's a heteropolymer. And in this simple child's toy model, those individual subunits are different colors. And in a protein, they're amino acids that make up the individual building blocks that come together. And for a protein, they form a nice three-dimensional structure. So that structure is responsible for giving a protein some particular function. And that function in a cell does lots of things. So from whether it's a structural protein like the keratin in your nails or uh, to the collagen that makes up cartilage in your ears or your tendons and ligaments, the other kinds of functions proteins can have is as signaling molecules in the body. So proteins, normally, if we want to produce them as uh, pharmaceutical products, we'd like them to stay in solution, have that nice native structure, and this is what they would look like in solution, nice, clear, I call this a happy protein. So you can imagine if you're making a protein drug, a common one that you might think of as human insulin that diabetics take, you'd like to be able to make the protein and put it on a shelf for years and have it stay soluble in solution, functional, to be used at any time. What can happen if they're stored incorrectly or under certain conditions is it forms protein aggregates that's shown here, this cloudy solution. And why is this bad? So it's not just that it's out of solution, but this can result in a loss of function. So the protein doesn't act correctly. And so, for example, in the case of human insulin, it won't treat the disease for which it's meant for. And in the worst case, it can also cause immune reaction. And my laboratory is interested in understanding why that happens, what we can do to prevent it to happen, and helping uh, drug formulators figure out better ways to design around that.